Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to get into this because I've got so many messages being like, where is your 2023 book recap? I just got home and so I haven't had time to film it, but we're gonna get into it now. I was looking at my list of books that I've read this past year and I actually forgot half of the books that I read. It's like going back in time and I'm looking at the beginning of this list and I'm like, I read that in 2023, I'm so confused. This past year, I read 65 books, which is really, really great for me. Also, sorry, it's very cloudy outside. So the lighting is gonna change here and there this whole video because the sun is moving behind clouds. Anyway, let's get into it. I'm gonna go from the very beginning of 2023 until my last book. I like to go in chronological order. Let's get started. The first book I read in 2023 was Restore Me. So this is from the Shatter Me series. I completely thought I finished the whole Shatter Me series in 2022, but I actually read the rest of them this year. So I read Restore Me first. I really loved this series. It is young adult. It's a fantasy series, but I absolutely loved it. I love Juliet. I just think she's iconic and it's dystopian. And I really, really enjoyed this whole series. Once again, I've said this before, but I started reading this because I actually read the first three books when I was in high school completely forgot about it and then when I went back to finish the series there was like a million books out so I read Restore Me first I did give Restore Me three stars I think when there's a fantasy series and there's so many books in each like some of them are just lower than others because some just really outshine the rest of them there's also a lot of novellas that are in the Shadow Me series I read all of them but I think some of those are like lower rating just because they're novellas and they're very short. The next book I read was Where the Crawdads Sing. I really wanted to watch the movie and I loved it so much. I don't know what people's opinions about the movie versus the book is, but I was obsessed with this book. I read it so quickly. I think I gave it five stars. Yeah, I gave it five stars and I really enjoyed it and also, for me personally, when I watched the movie, I thought it was exactly how I pictured it, if not better. Like the way that I pictured her home in this book with like all the shells and all the little things like was exactly how I thought about it in the book. And I hadn't even seen anything about the movie before. I had no context to what this book was about, but I really, really enjoyed it. The ending was perfect. I thought it was so good. And I think it's a classic. Everyone should read this book. And I thought it was so good. And then the next three books I read were the rest of the Shatter Me series. So the first one I actually read like combined this is book five I gave Defy Me five stars and then I gave Imagine Me four I loved both of them but with this series I did feel like we didn't need as many books like I felt like a lot of this was dragged out I think this one dragged or this one dragged a little bit more but I loved them both so much and then I read the final one which is like this little tiny novella which is Believe Me again I know I've talked about the Shadow Me series a lot if you want to read a dystopian style book that's it's also young adult it's got love interest in there it's got like war powers different things like that I loved it it's not fey but it's really really good the next book I read was behind closed doors it's a thriller it's by B.A. Paris and I really enjoyed this I feel like I read a couple books that had a very similar concept to this like this one which is the one I read next this is the last Miss Parish I read this one it's by Liv Constantine I read this because a lot of people really recommended it to me I honestly felt like I don't know there's very similar books that I felt like I read this year so I need to like branch out of my thrillers I gave this four stars I did think it was a little bit predictable like I love when books have like a real twist I read The Silent Patient last year and I loved The Silent Patient it was so good and so I was kind of hoping for that with this book but this was still a very good thriller I gave it four stars and I really enjoyed it with The Last Miss Parish I enjoyed this a lot when I was first reading it, but you'll see I read two other books. So I read The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secret, and I liked them a lot better. Um, and I had, I wish I hadn't read this before then because they have very, very similar storylines. Not exact, but very similar. But again, really good thriller. Enjoyed this. Very quick read. How many pages is this? 403 pages. I just love like a one book thriller that keeps me really engaged and both of these I felt that way like I went through them I think in two days the next book I read is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo I gave that one four stars looking back on it now I honestly didn't love it but I think it's maybe because it was like my first book that maybe was like I, I don't know I don't know what about it I didn't like I just remember it was taking me a while to like want to go and pick back up and that's typically how I can gauge whether I'm super interested in a book because I read very quickly 
quickly and especially if it's engaging or I'm invested in the characters or I'm invested in the plot like I will go back and like I will read it all in one sitting with this one it was a little bit slower I do think I would probably like the movie when it comes out better than I like the book but the book was still good it's not like a book that I recommend to everyone though I felt like everyone really really loved it and so I felt very pressured to love it a lot and I just didn't actually it wasn't even in my top 10 favorite books that I read this past year like it just wasn't my vibe but to each their own I know a lot of people who do love it they like stand it um, but yeah as some husbands of Evan Hugo like it was my vibe totally the next book I read was maybe someday by Colleen Hoover so I hadn't read a Colleen Hoover book in a long time like so, like since 2022 I felt like maybe I wanted to pick one back up and I had it in my drawer. I gave it three stars. I actually don't hate Colleen Hoover's books. I know that a lot of people like don't like her at all. I actually really like a lot of the books that I've read by her, but that one was so young adult and like I just I just did not like it at all. Like the concept was interesting, but I also was reading it and it did seem a little bit too adolescent for me. Like I just like wasn't into it. I like more spice. Like I'm just gonna be honest. And it wasn't even that there was a lack of spice. I just didn't really like the storyline of it. But I read it anyway. Maybe someday is actually a series. I think there's three books in it, but I read the first one and then I was like, I'm good. I don't care enough about the these people to like keep on keep on reading about their life but I hope they're doing well I hope they're I hope they're great the next book I read is things we hide from the light it's in the knock em out series it's by Lucy score I love this series it's one of my favorites ever when people ask me for a good romance series to start this is like the first one that I recommend so there's three books in it I read the second one and the third one this year but for the second one things we hide from the light I loved it it was my least favorite out of the three but it was still so good it just says a lot like even if it's my least favorite I still loved it so much and I highly recommend it I really like Lucy scores books I think she's a great author I love her characters and I just thought it was so fun it's small town like romance so start with the first one because it's just so good I actually linked it out to Nat right now so I don't have it to hold up I only have the first and the third to show you guys but the next book I read is I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy so this is a, I want to say it's a memoir no it's about Jeanette McCurdy's life I enjoyed this so much it's actually not even like very big but I just remember I like took my time reading this I really enjoyed it I loved getting to hear about her life she's got lots of different like trauma and things like that and just like the behind the scenes of her life being on Nickelodeon how she grew up what she dealt with with her mom and her parents and just like her whole family situation I just think it's so so interesting and I really enjoyed it it was very well done and you can tell it's not written like I don't feel like it's impersonal like it sounds exactly how I feel like she speaks which is exactly what I would want from a book especially when it's a book like this so I really enjoyed this I gave this five stars and I thought it was so good I would totally recommend to everyone I know that the title is a little shocking to some people but I think once you read it you'll totally understand it's got great comedic relief in it which I thought was really great especially because she's diving into like a lot of things that can be triggering for some people but I really really enjoyed this book I think this book is what made me want to like read more celebrity books because this was my first one that I've ever read I've never read anything else like I haven't read Britney Spears yet I want to read that this year but I don't know if I will because everyone's pretty much said everything that's in it so I'm like do I need to read it but this one has definitely inspired me to want to read more books that are similar to this because I just think like the way that people grow up and their perspectives and stuff especially people who are in the spotlight is so interesting the next book I read is a thriller it's the perfect marriage by Geneva Rose I want to read more books by her because I truly loved this book so much again I think a lot of these books are like a little bit similar like it's like a wife with like a crazy husband or whatever but this one was so good I loved the ending of it I was very intrigued the whole time it's one of those that like as you're reading it you keep trying to guess like what is going on where is this going who did it and it's just so so interesting the concept of it it's basically about this woman and she's married to her husband I'm not giving any spoilers but whatever she's married to her husband and his mistress is found dead and so he's basically like on trial for it and stuff but the wife has to defend him and like be his attorney and stuff like that so it's just very very interesting um I loved it so much so the like back of it says would you defend your husband even if he was accused of killing his mistress it's a very interesting concept it makes you think a lot also once you get to the end of it you're just like how did she write this it's so good okay <laughs> I'm literally sweating trying to hold these all up the next books I read were I read the whole throne of glass series 
It's a lot of books, I know. Don't be intimidated if you're looking to starting it. I was very intimidated before. It's really not as scary as it looks and it is the best series ever. It is, I think, my favorite series. Favorite books that I've read this year are these Thorn of Glass series. So they're all by Sarah J. Mass. Of course, if you've heard of Sarah J. Mass, you know she wrote A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then she has another series, which is Thorn of Glass, which is this one. She actually wrote this one before she wrote A Court of Thorns and Roses. And then she also has Crescent City. So there's three series that are out by her. They're all incredible. Throne of Glass is so good. I have a few videos on my TikTok of the order that I read them, and I'm not going to dive in too much about all the books because I talk so much about her, and I also talked about her when I read these in my book recap for the month, so I can't get crazy. But I will tell you what my favorite books from the series were. My all-time favorite book from the whole series is Queen of Shadows. Once you get to this book, it's just so good. The way that every, the way that she writes and the way she just like creates all these timelines perfectly, the way these characters develop. I just think her character development in these books out of all her other books that she's written so far is the best I feel the most invested with these characters. I care about them more than anyone like I'm not kidding I'm obsessed with them, especially the main character in this book. She's incredible So Queen of Shadows was by far my favorite and then of course Kingdom of Ash, which is a real thick book I think this is like 900 pages or something like that. It's really it's really big. This is a commitment that you have to make and once you make it you will be so happy. It is the best fantasy series. It's just so good. Oh, oh my god. I could talk about Throne of Glass for days and days and days. All my friends are reading it right now. When I finished this series I did not know what to do with myself. The only thing I will say is if you've read Sarah J Mass and you've read A Court of Thorns and Roses it has a lot more spice in those books than the throne of glass don't be worried about that when you go into a book and you're like oh my god it's gonna be so slow whatever it actually doesn't matter because you will literally be so like you'll be so in love with these books that it actually doesn't even cross your mind that you're missing some of that even though you get it in the later books just just stick with it i promise you so good. The next book I read is Twisted Love. I read the whole Twisted Love series, but I started with this one and I did not like it. I find it so funny because Nat actually was asking me how I felt about this series and she was like, I'm going to read it. Like, what do you think? And I was like, honestly, just get past the first book because I like hated the first book. It, the guy like wasn't for me. I don't even know. What did I rate this? I gave it three stars. I did not like, <laughs> I did not like this book. And then Nat went and read it, and she was like, that was five stars. That was incredible. I'm obsessed with him. I'm in love. And I was like, okay. So you know what? To each their own. Um, I read Twisted Love. I gave it three stars. And so after that, I was like, I don't know if I want to read the rest of the series. I'm going to give it a break. So I put that away, and then I read two thrillers. These were some of my favorite thrillers that I read this year. I'm so glad I discovered this author. This is Lucy Foley. The way that she writes and the way that she structures her books are a little bit different. So first, I read The Paris Apartment. The way she does them, or I don't know if she does all her books like this, but these two specifically. Um, this one is about a mystery in a Paris apartment, and so there's a bunch of tenants. Each perspective, like each chapter, is a different tenant's perspective. So it is very jumpy. If you're not used to that, I know I recommended it to my friend Poppy, and she was like, I just don't think I like that, like the jumping from different perspectives. But it's what really keeps you on your toes because you're bouncing from person to person and you're trying to piece things together, but you will have literally no clue until the end. And it's so, so good. So I do like the way she structures her books. It's the same thing with this one. This is the guest list. So I read the Paris apartment, then I read the guest list the guest list is about a wedding they all go to like this island on a wedding so each perspective is a different person's or each perspective is a guest at the wedding it's like the chef the bride the groom the sister-in-law and like there's just so much drama and once again the ending is so good on this one i'm very happy i discovered her this year i really enjoy her books and so i'm looking forward to reading more of those in 2024. the next book i read is the fine print this is by lauren asher i loved this book i'm so so obsessed with this series when i see that people get to read this for the first time i'm actually jealous because meeting all these people for the first time is so good it's actually about three brothers and the basis is basically they like own what is essentially like disneyland like they own a huge theme park but they're like businessmen in it so they each have different roles and their grandfather passed away and in his will he left for each of the 
like grandchildren each of the guys he left them I haven't read this in a while so sorry if I'm messing this up but I'm pretty sure this is right he left them each something that they need to accomplish in order to get their stake or their portion in the company so each book is about each brother and what they have to do and it's very interesting but obviously it's all love it's very spicy which I absolutely love but it's not too spicy that you're not like every single chapter you're like okay this is like a bit much it's just the right amount it's so perfect so i started with the fine print and i absolutely loved it and then i was like let's go back to the twisted love series so then i picked these back up and i read all three of them back to back to back so the next one that i read is twisted games this one is like i think everyone's favorite everyone is obsessed with him what is his name again reese larson everyone is obsessed with him if you've seen about reese larson this is the book for you you just you like you don't necessarily have to read all of them if you want to just pick one up but I think it's better to read all of them just because like they're all in a friend group they're all connected in some way they always all interact also she has other series where it's like branching off of these and they also interact so I think it's good to just read them all I love twisted games I gave it what did I give this five stars I literally gave this book three and gave this one five so this was a big jump for me and then I read twisted hate this one was so good I was I don't know what I was expecting from this one but if you like the best friend's brother trope this is for you that's what this one is about this one is basically a princess and her bodyguard this one is best friend's brother so good it's also like hate relationship like they're literally always beefing but like obviously they're in love so but my favorite I think about Christian Harper to this day to this day today I think about him I love this book so much. I love Twisted Lies. My main thing, I always tell you guys this, I love when a man is obsessed with me. Like, stalk me, be obsessed with me. Literally, it's my favorite thing ever. I love when I'm reading a man's perspective and they like can't breathe because they're just so in love. <laughs> it's like, I love to just picture that. It's incredible. That's this, but also very spicy. But he's also very hot. And he's also very obsessed with her and it's the greatest thing that's literally ever happened so this was my favorite of the whole series also five stars I gave these three five stars this one three so wah, wah. sorry Alex you got the the boot so many people are gonna disagree with that because when I get on TikTok, they're like oh my god I love Alex and I'm like I don't know how you guys felt that way I just like did not feel that and then because I was in my spice era I went to icebreaker everyone was telling me to read icebreaker I feel like this was like the book that every single person has read this year and I loved it and I don't care I don't care if it makes me basic I mean I think I was trying to I think I was trying to hate it like I was trying to be like no this isn't gonna be all that I loved it it's by Hannah Grace it's so good it's a hockey romance but it's got angst I also love when the guy falls first that's this okay so good and I just loved everything about it it was incredible I gave it five stars I also loved the way it was written because I felt like it was a little bit more realistic like I hate when I hate when there's pop culture references and books and it's like it's not actually how people my age or like people in high school talk to each other like this is not how we speak you're making it sound so corny and cringy this I didn't feel like did that for me there's some books that I'm like please please stop trying so hard but this one I didn't feel that way I really enjoyed it and I really liked it and then I read terms and conditions so this is by Lauren Asher this is the second book in this fine print series I loved this I really really like Declan it's about it's a it's a work relationship so it's like the head guy with the assistant so good I really really liked it it's also uh what is it arranged marriage trope arranged marriage trope that's what this one is and I really liked it this I think was my second favorite this was my third favorite and then I read final offer and everyone knows everyone knows the final offer is the best book like if you disagree you're wrong like I'm so sorry but Callahan is the greatest thing ever this one's also I think the biggest one in the series and it needed to be because I just feel like I love this guy like I love this guy so much and it's just so good it's about like high school sweethearts or childhood sweethearts they've had a falling out and so they're trying to like come back together a little bit once again it's kind of small town vibe which I really really like but they're also obviously like million bajillionaires we love a guy with a bunch of money it's just great I also love groveling and we got some good we got some good groveling in here which I like and then we went on to Crescent City so I read both books and I literally could not put them down. They're much thicker books. I'm obsessed with them, but they're definitely much thicker than, like I feel like for like a first book, this is like a pretty, this is a pretty 
hefty book. Yeah, this is like 800 pages for the first book. The first one in Crescent City is very like world building, kind of like information dumping, but it's so, so, so important. It sets everything up, especially for the second book. It's incredible. I just love the way Sarah J Mass writes. I literally think that the movies that need to come out with all these books need to be like how Harry Potter is. Like that's legit what I think. The way I picture these worlds, the way I'm so invested in their characters, I need them like done so incredibly well. That's what I need. The third one comes out this month. I will be locked away in a dungeon reading House of Flame and Shadow because it's going to destroy my life and it's also going to be the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I can't wait for the third book. That's really, that's truly how I feel. Next, I read King of Wrath. I really enjoyed this. What did I give this? I gave this four stars. So this is actually, um, it's like a side series. This is called the Kings of Sin series. So each book is going to be, I think, based off of like the seven deadly sins. So I think it's going to be seven books. But the guy that is in this first book of the series was introduced in the last book of Twisted Love, if that makes sense. So he's not like a main character in that book, but it's like you kind of meet him in this, and then you could go to this series, read about his life and his love story, and it's really good. It's also, I think this is a arranged marriage trope as well. I loved this one. I gave it four stars. It was incredible. I would read it again. I love Dante and I thought it was great. Next, I read The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. If you guys can tell my reading order, like I like to, sw I'll switch it up every once in a while. So like I'll read like a bunch of like romance books. And then once I get that out of my system, I move back on to like thrillers or whatever. So I'll throw in a thriller here. So this one was obviously highly recommended, The Housemaid. I loved it so much. I gave it five stars. I thought it was incredible. It's a shorter read, but it very much keeps you on your toes. I read it in literally like one day and I was obsessed with it. It also is the book that introduced me to Frida McFadden. And then I read a bunch more of her books this year because they were just too good to not keep reading. There's a bunch more that I need to read this next year, but this one... This is the one to start with. And then I moved on and I read the A Touch of Darkness series. So this is actually like a take on Greek mythology. It is about Hades and Persephone, but it's like done in a way, like it's very spicy and it's like a retelling of their story in a more like modern way. This was my first series or type of book that's like Greek mythology retelling and I loved it. The way, the way that I'm in love with Hades is actually it's actually not okay like these books consumed me the way I've got all these little tabs in here I actually fell in love I gave all three of these books right here four stars so they're all just like in sequence of what's going on there's also a Hades perspective so all of these are in Persephone's perspective and then there is the exact same like it's the exact same timeline but in Hades so I didn't realize that until I bought the first three books and I read them in this order and then I was like dang I should have alternated and read like a touch of darkness and then Hades and then a touch of malice and then Hades like I should have done that but I didn't I will potentially go back maybe this year and read Hades perspectives because there's a fourth book the fourth book is gonna be the last one that comes out but when I read the fourth one maybe I'll do that with Hades because everyone says that his perspective is actually so good and I love a guy's perspective I really do next I read the housemaid secret so this one goes after the housemaid so read this one after don't get confused it is the same like you'll see when you read the first one but this one I loved so much. I didn't love it as much as I loved the first one though. I still gave it five stars because I was very much on my toes, but I just fell in love with Freedom McFadden and I just love it. It's such a great thriller. It's just, it's intriguing. It's spooky and it's so good. Next, I read another Freedom McFadden book. It's The Inmate. So this one I thought was a really, really interesting concept. I gave this one four stars though, just because the ending was the Teen, like a little bit predictable like I was pretty much kind of guessing it but I really enjoyed it the inmate is basically it's like about this woman and she works at a like inmate facility or whatever she's a nurse there and she ends up working on someone or being at the same facility with someone that she has history with but she basically like convicted him that's why he's in there so it's very very interesting the way all of this stuff kind of unfolds next up i read fourth wing i feel like this was the book of 2023 seriously everyone read this book everyone felt obsessed with this it's by rebecca yaros it is a fantasy book it has to do with dragons they're at a college and it's very interesting the first book i went through so quickly i gave this book four stars and i really really enjoyed it there's the perfect amount of spice perfect amount of like build up 
This first book gave a very good setup for what future books are going to be. I don't know how many are going to be in the series, but this is such a great fantasy series. It's got everything that you would want. It's got love and war and challenges and growth, and it's really, really good. I feel like I can't even talk about this for a long time because I just feel like it's been so talked about everywhere, but I did read this and I gave four stars. The next book I read is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book, this book like actually wrecked me and my friend who recommended it to me was like, yeah, it's gonna like literally ruin you. And I'm like, what do you mean? And then I read it and I actually was crying and I loved it so much. It's such a short book. So I was just like, how am I gonna get enough out of this? But it was perfection. I loved it. It was so beautifully done, beautifully written. I gave it five stars. I think this is probably one of my favorite reads that I read this year. It's just such an interesting and like beautiful take on love. Like it's tragic, but it's so important. And I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed everything about it. This was my first Taylor Jenkins read book that I read. Oh wait, no. What else did she write? She wrote Seven Husbands. That's what it was. I was like, this book redeemed her for me because I didn't love Seven Husbands as much, but I loved this book so so much and I really enjoyed it it's beautiful the next two books I read on my little Kindle here I read the sweetest oblivion the maddest obsession so they're both by Daniel Laurie it's a three series book this was my first mafia romance book so like I was like nervous to get into these because everyone's like girl beware they're a little spooky you might not be ready for them because it's getting into like the darker romance of stuff but oh my god loved like absolutely loved them I was like wait I'm obsessed with this I love it it's so good I just love reading like romance books or just books in general that like absolutely would never happen to me in my real life and are just like I think this is just so out there it is what it is loved them the sweetest oblivion I gave four stars and then the maddest obsession I gave five but you guys know how I am I love, I love a man who's obsessed. Like, you're gonna say the maddest obsession, duh, it's getting five stars. I'm obsessed with it. Like, I love when a guy's just like so obsessed and he just can't control himself. And he's like, I will kill everyone in this place because you are the love of my life. Period. That's what I want. So that's what I read and I loved it. I also read the third book in the series, which is The Darkest Temptation. I gave that one four stars too. The Darkest Temptation, I think out of all three of them, was the one that I felt the most was like, ooh, like, this is gonna little a little iffy with my morals but I still loved it like but that was the one that I was like definitely questioning I mean I was definitely questioning my morals in all three of them but the third one is where I was like what I still gave it four stars though absolutely loved it like hello I don't know what other books this author Daniel Laurie has but I will definitely read them this year um after I read all three of those I went and read another fantasy book this one I loved I have a reading blog for this one it's one dark window by Rachel Gillig I can't even remember where I saw this on TikTok but someone had recommended it and it's such a good fantasy series. I am obsessed with the entire concept of this. It's not fey or anything like that, but it's old magic. It's very eerie. The way that, like reading this, you know you just get that feeling or that vibe from it. It's very eerie, but it's so important. And it's only a two book fantasy series, but the way that I was so invested in these characters, I feel like says a lot. Whichever books Rachel Gilly comes out with next, I will read them because I truly loved this book. It's also a main character um, girl. She's got like basically like this monster kind of like living in her mind. It's about that, but they're in an old, old town and it's set with like hidden magic, ancient magic, and stuff is outlawed. It's just like, I don't know, the whole concept of it. You guys know what I'm talking about, the Providence cards, like everything about it is so cool. And this would be so, so cool as like just a limited series or something like that if they made this into a series I would love it next I read the selection by Kira Cass this is a dystopian young adult series I actually really liked the first book I gave this four stars It's very small as you guys can see I think it's only 300 pages or yeah it's only 300 pages pretty small very quick read I was very intrigued by it it's about a dystopian setting obviously it's kind of like Hunger Games where it's like there's different like rankings in different parts of like their world or whatever and then there's a prince and he's looking for a princess but the girls have to like essentially fight you get chosen to go and be like the princess or whatever and you kind of have to compete for it so it's like a pageant 
but there's all this other stuff that's going on so I read the first one I gave it four stars and then the second book in the series is called the elite I read the elite on my Kindle and I gave it three stars the elite is where I was feeling like I don't think I like this as much I think just because it's too young adult and I don't like the back and forth like I love a good triangle but the triangle is too much like the main character is bouncing way too much for me and she just never sticks with what she says it got super frustrating to read so the second book I gave it three stars and I was like let me take a little mental break from this right now so I took a break from that and then I went to King of Pride so this is the second book in the Kings of Sin series I loved this one but I only gave this one four stars I think yeah this one got four stars Kai's not my favorite like I didn't love this storyline it's a uh, kind of well, I'm trying to describe the trope it's not forbidden trope but it's like a work trope you know what I mean so it's like they're not supposed to be together because one works for the other if that makes sense so it's kind of like that it's also opposites attract so they're very very different people but they somehow work I still loved it I still read it and really enjoyed it but I liked the first one King of Wrath better than I liked the second one the next book I read was My Dark Romeo I can't even remember where I found this it's probably just one of those random like dark romance books that I saw on TikTok um, by Park Parker S. Huntington. It's the only book I've ever read by her, I think. And I honestly can't remember the plot that much, but I yes I do it's arranged marriage so it's yeah it's arranged marriage and it's very like you know I'm gonna murder someone for you and I really enjoyed it but I gave it four stars the next book I read is things we left behind this is the last book in the knock em out series by Lucy score this was my favorite of the whole series I loved it it is childhood lovers once again they had a falling out and it's the groveling it's like the miscommunication a little bit and then they're coming back it's so so good this is my favorite of the whole series i really enjoyed this like i said whenever anyone's like oh i need a good romance series to read i either recommend the knock em out series which is three books or the fine print series by lauren asher which is those three books both of them are incredible i love them so so much also like i just love lucian like he's everything he out of the whole series like the other two are more like country like grumpy sunshine kind of vibe this one is like rich billionaire like mogul with like the girl it's just it's so cute and she's a librarian i just love the contrast it's everything the next book i read is mile high this is by liz tomford i think i love this i'm so happy i discovered the windy city series it was on my to be read for a while and i'm so glad i read it i loved the mile high series i also just really enjoy the characters i love the setting being in chicago i haven't read any other books where the setting is chicago and i really really enjoyed them i gave it five stars it's romance it's spice but it also like I said it has good character development the main girl like struggles with like body issues and stuff like that so like I feel like it is a very relatable book and I love when the main character like I can relate to them I don't like when the main female character is super like I don't know sometimes their personalities are just too strong for me I loved hers and I really enjoyed the first book in the Mile High series the next book I read is Wildfire by Hannah Grace so this is the second book with Icebreaker so I think there's gonna be more books by her it's the Maple Hills series so there's just like different guys and different friend groups that are gonna branch off into different books I'm so sad because I did like this book but I didn't enjoy it as much as Icebreaker and I felt like the I don't know like I just felt like the plot was like missing something or the characters were missing something like I just don't know why I didn't care about them as much so hopefully when Henry's book comes out I will love Henry's book but this one this one was still good I just didn't love it as much as Icebreaker and I feel like it's really hard to follow up a book that goes as viral as Icebreaker does this one is set at a camp and they're camp counselors so maybe that's what was kind of like throwing me a little bit um I don't know the next book I read is The Cruel Prince so this is another fantasy series that I started I also have a reading vlog to this on my channel if you guys have read it or you want to go watch that you guys can but this one is by Holly Black this one was so good I actually have the Wicked King it's sitting on my shelf over there I'm gonna read that next because it is actually really really good and it's like folky I just love the like setting that this is in it's like old like fairies and things like that and like magic and I do love the angst in this it's a little bit young adult so it's not super super spicy but there's a great love interest in this I love the main characters like I love the main girl in this I think she's like incredible and 
I'm very excited to see where this plot goes because the way that this first book ended was so good and it's really setting the second one up to be like really incredible. Like I feel like I'll love the second one even more than I loved the first one. I did give this one four stars, but like I said, I think the second one's probably gonna be like five stars because I can tell this one set up so much for the second one. Like this is basically just like, it's just the beginning and it's so good. I know I keep saying so good this entire video, but that's just the only way I can describe how I feel. Next up, I read Caught Up, which is the second book in this Windy Cities series. I know that I, I bounce a lot. I'm realizing that as I'm reading these, I bounce a lot between series. Like I like to give myself a break, except with Sarah J Mass. Sarah J Mass is like the only ones that I read like back to back to back because I literally can't like take a break from them. But the second one I read is Caught Up. It's also by Liz Tomford. It's the second one in the Windy Cities. This was my favorite by far. I'm literally, I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with Kai. Like I'm obsessed with him. It's a single father and then it's this girl oh my god and I love the main character like I love when the main girl is just like super confident and she's just like very straightforward with herself I love that I think it's because I love to see like I'm not super that way there's helicopters I'm not super that way so I love to just like read characters who are just like so blunt and like speak in just like ways that I would never talk I love this series oh I also forgot to read the right move the right move is the second book in the Windy City series. So the second one, I really enjoyed. I also gave it five stars. The way that I discovered Liz Tomford and read the whole Mile High series and then, or Windy City series and gave them all five stars is actually insane. Like I, I'm truly in love with all the men in these books. It's actually sick. It's actually sick the way that she can actually do that to me. How can you make these people and they're not even real? The next book I read is King of Greed. So this is the third book in the Kings of Sin series. I loved this, but I was definitely, I think, I think I was just very, very hopeful from all the lead up that I'd seen to it. So this is about like a, it's about a marriage that's kind of like falling apart. So there needs to be like groveling and development. I think I just needed more groveling. I think that's what it was. Like I obviously cared about these characters a lot, but it was not at all what I had envisioned in my mind. Like it did not go at all where I thought the story was going to go. I was a little bit disappointed. I think I gave this, I gave this four stars still. So the whole Kings of Sin series I've given four stars to. Um, and I really enjoy them. The next one is Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is the second book in the One Dark Window series. Again, I loved this. I gave it five stars. I thought the plot, the way everything was written is so incredible. It's such a great fantasy series. And if you're not ready to commit to a fantasy series that's like eight books, read this one and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. It's also a very good fall series. Like I felt like when I read it in like October, November, I thought it was the perfect series to read around that time. Now this book, y'all got me with this one. Y'all got me with this one because y'all were like, oh my God, Keaton, read normal people. You're gonna love it so much. It's gonna ruin your life. You're gonna cry so much. And then I went to the store and I was like, fine, I'll pick up normal people, whatever. I have, li I had literally, I don't even know how, I must have lived under a rock. I literally never even seen anything about the show. I knew nothing about it. And then I went to pick it up. I was like, this is like a 200 page book. Like how is this? I don't understand. I don't know how it's gonna get me where I think it needs to get me. Typically, I guess with bigger books, I don't know. I think that's just a misconception. Like if I'm reading a bigger book, I feel like it'll have more character development, more time to get to know them. No, 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 no. I loved this book so much. I know there's so many controversial opinions about the ending of this book. Like everyone feels a different type of way. I loved this. The way, the, the way that I feel about Connell and Marianne, it's unmatched. It's literally unmatched. I loved this. It's such an interesting way that she read this book. I will say the first time I opened it up and there were no quotation marks and it was just like dialogue. I was like, do I have that misprint in this book? I'm so lost. But then you get used to it as you keep reading. I'm obsessed with this. And then I watched the show. I obviously binged the whole show in one sitting. I've rewatched it a million times since then because I'm obsessed with these characters. It's the most real, raw, and honest way of showing real relationships. And I just feel like everyone can relate to some aspect of this book, whether you're Connell or you're Marianne, or you've done something that either one of these characters has done. It's just like, you just feel for them so heavily. And then when you watch the show, it's so beautifully done. I love the way that they kept so much of the original dialogue from this book in the show and I'm very very happy that I read the book before I watched the show because it was so incredible. I love you Sally Rooney. I now need to go read another book by her. A lot of you guys recommended one. It's like conversations 
something. I don't know what it's called, but I will definitely read another Sally Rooney book because I loved the way she wrote and I just really enjoyed this book. And it did ruin my life. I did sob, obviously, and then I sobbed watching the show and I still think about it to this day. And I like every single edit that I see of Connell and Marianne on my TikTok. Most of my likes are normal people edits. What's wrong with me? I don't know. A lot. A lot, apparently. Next, I read Iron Flame. And I, I unfortunately am so sad that I didn't enjoy this book as much as I loved Fourth Wing. Fourth Wing was everything to me. This is the second book in the Fourth Wing series. And I just had such high expectations. But I just think that I have a whole reading vlog on this if you want like my full thoughts about it. But there's so much in this book that I don't understand. And it was so hard for me to get through this took me like two weeks to read that's like unheard of in my head i know that's probably normal for other people but like i can read a book so quickly and it took me forever to read and it's a universal experience every single person i've talked to every single person in my life right now who's reading iron flame is like why can i not finish this dang book i don't know what it is about this book but it was just i don't know it's just too many words too much nonsense and also i didn't feel like there was enough like context for some of the things that were described but i still enjoyed the plot i'm interested to see where the third book is go i'm still gonna read the third book i gave this one four stars i did really enjoy it it's just that there was so much that i was struggling with with it that made me like ugh, i don't know but i also think it's because it was very very highly anticipated so sometimes that happens with books when you're very excited about them they just kind of like womp womp i don't know like something about them so maybe that's what it was that's why i was like feeling like i was reading it so slow but I still enjoyed it. I still gave it four stars and I will read the third one when it comes out. The next book I read is Punk 57. This is by Penelope Douglas. It's another like spicy romance book. I gave it four stars. I think that there's some things that I just don't like in books. I, for some reason, I have like a problem. Like I don't like the like singing of it all or I don't like when it's like they're like a musician and then they like write these things. Like, I don't know something about that. I didn't know that's what the book was. Like the main guy like literally like writes lyrics and like there were some things that I just found like cringe. Like I just didn't like like I just didn't like some of like the poems and like the graffiti. I don't know. Some of it was like cringy. But that's sometimes what you get when you're reading like a romance novel and stuff like that. Like it's obviously not going to be real and like some stuff is just going to be like a little bit cringe. But you get over it. I still liked the characters. I gave it four stars. It was my first Penelope Douglas book. There's other books by her that I know are like really different than that. So maybe I need to like branch out into those. I'm a little bit nervous though because I don't know. Some of them seem a little spooky ooky. But Puck 57 was great. Still enjoyed it. The last book that I read of 2023. Next up I read two books in the Lancaster Prep series. They are both by Monica Murphy. So the first one is called Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did. Um, and I actually read them backwards because I saw this book first So you don't need to necessarily read them in order because they don't relate to each other But they're at the same prep school if that makes sense So the first one I read is a million kisses in your lifetime and I loved it. I thought it was so good I really really liked it. The only thing is is like there's some aspects that are like a little bit like it's hard to sometimes imagine like I know that this stuff is not real but like when they're so young when they're like in a prep school and then they have like so much money and they're doing like insane things I'm like this is not this is not accurate and in this one I think that th there was just some things that I was like this is a little bit questionable but it was still really good I love Monica Murphy I loved this book and then the second book in the series this is the Lancaster Prep series it's the things I want to say but never did so I read that one next um, and I think I liked that one more than I liked this first one. The second one, Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did, I think is like a little bit darker than this first one, but I still enjoyed both. I think I'll continue to read Monica Murphy books because I've had a lot of these books. Like this one was on my to be read for so long and I like just got around to reading it. I am really, really actually liked it. So I'm excited to see. I don't know if I'll read the rest of the Lancaster prep. The last book that I read of 2023 was a thriller. This one I was so, so happy to end the year with. It is called Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. It is about a young girl who is missing and the mom is basically trying to like piece all these things together about her life. It's like such a big turn of events. I really liked the way it ended. It really kept me on my toes. Like I, there were so many things, like there's so much going on that you're just like, is it this person or why is this person doing that? This doesn't make sense. 
how did this happen I loved this I thought it was really great again this is my first book by Lisa Jewell so hopefully I can find some more books by her that I like I love when I can find like a good thriller author that I really enjoy and I loved this one all right I know this has been a very long video I hope this gave you guys some ideas for maybe 2024 some books that you can read now what I'm going to do is I'm going to list my top 10 favorite books that I read this year in order so let's get into it coming in at number 10 I have the fine print series by Lauren Asher I am gonna do a series I'm not gonna choose individual books there's just too many and honestly even narrowing it down to top 10 is difficult for me because I loved so many books this year but the fine print at number 10 that series by Lauren Asher was probably one of my favorites at number nine I have the housemaid series so the first two books by Frieda McFadden I truly enjoyed them so much I'm really glad that I started reading Frieda McFadden books this past year because I really enjoy her as an author and every like thriller book that I've read by her I've loved so much so I'm excited to read more at number eight I have then she was gone by Lisa Jewell another thriller I'm glad that I have a lot of thrillers in this because I'm a true crime fan I love to read and watch true crime so reading thrillers I feel like really like fills that space for me number seven I have the Wendy City series by Liz Tomford I love this series so much all three books I cannot wait for the fourth one it's just gonna be so so good I love this perfect romance books but also just like I think about these people all the time once you read them you'll know at number six I have the one dark window series so just the two books by Rachel Gillick one dark window and two twisted crowns that was one of my favorite fantasy reads that I read this year I like think about it all the time it's like I wish it was longer but also the two books were perfect like it ended perfectly and it was exactly what I needed it to be at number five I have fourth wing like I said I really enjoyed this I loved fourth wing when I first read the first book I went through it so quickly I didn't include the fourth wing series in this as number five because the second book I don't think is in my top ten for this year unfortunately it just didn't do it for me but the first book is so good at number four it's one true loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid I felt like this book was just so beautiful I recommended it to so many people and all of you guys were like I'm so glad that you recommended this because I enjoyed it so much it was just incredible I loved it so much at number three I have normal people by Sally Rooney I like I said I know I talked about it already number three is Sally Rooney because I just cannot get over these characters I don't think I ever will I think I'll think about them forever and ever and ever and ever and I'll rewatch the show over and over and over again at number two I have the Crescent City series I absolutely absolutely loved this like I said I know I'm gonna talk about Sarah J Mass all the time but number two is Crescent City and my number one is the Throne of Glass series I was gonna put just Kingdom of Ash as the first my favorite book that I read the whole year but honestly the whole series that's what consumed most of my reading this year because they're very large books and I loved them so much and I feel psychotic because I'm like literally sitting here in my day-to-day -day life and I'm like I wonder what they're doing like they're not doing anything Keaton because like they're not real do you know what I mean like they're not real but they are to me they are real in my head and I think about them all the time so the second and first is Sarah J Mass Crescent City and the Throne of Glass series absolutely by far my favorite things that I read this year I am so happy with everything I read there's some books that I feel like I branched out a little bit like I went into like different dark romance categories and stuff like that and so I'm trying to kind of get the hang of what I like to read or what I do like in books what I don't like in books oh I haven't set my 2024 goal last year my goal was 60 books and I read 65 I think that at the end of the year is when I slow down the most is when I'm very busy in like life and so I think that that was the perfect amount for me because I definitely like picked up a lot of reading but I've been slowing down a lot so I think I'm gonna do 75 10 more than I did this past year I think that that's a good goal for me and I'm very excited about it so I just set my Goodreads book challenge to 75 and I'm very excited. I'm gonna make another video of all of my 2024 to be read, my whole list of books that I really wanna read because I need to start adding to them. My list was huge in 2023 and then I read so much of it. So now I really need to like build that back up. That is it for this book video. I know it was very long. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys got some recs. If you guys read any of these books in this video, let me know what you guys thought about them. If you guys had similar opinions to me, if you guys had completely different opinions to me, leave them in the comments down below. I love to read about people's 
people's opinions on books, what they liked, what they didn't like, what books are you guys looking forward to? Maybe you guys can give me some recommendations because I do need to make a very long list and then I'll make another video on that. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.